Hi, thank you so much for joining us for Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. My name is Gabriel, I'm so glad you're with us. We're going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 9 for today's devotionable. It's a great picture of the grace of God. It's a picture of grace in the life of Mephibosheth with King David. And there's four things that I think we can be reminded of, perhaps learn for the first time about the grace of God. And the king's grace, the first thing I think we see is the, the king's grace is unexpected. In verse 1, David says, Is still there anyone left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? You know, we would expect as we're reading this that maybe coming off the height of the victories in chapter 8, where David is solidifying his kingdom and God is giving him great victories over his enemies, that he would say, Hey, are there any threats? Is there anybody I need to be afraid coming up behind me and taking me out and taking the kingdom? But that's not what David says. He doesn't say, hey, is there somebody left in the house of Saul that we need to be worried about? No. He says that we might show kindness to for the sake of Jonathan. Remember earlier in 1 Samuel 18 through 20, there's this great, beautiful, loving friendship between Jonathan and David, and they make a covenant, a promise to always take care of one another. And David says, I'll take care of your family. And here he's going to make good on that promise. And the king unexpectedly shows grace. You know, apart from Christ, we are enemies of God. He, we deserve God's judgment and wrath. And yet in Jesus, He offers us grace. It's unexpected and it's beautiful. Secondly, we see that grace is unsparing. It spares no expense. David is going to take care of Mephibosheth and set him up for life. He gives back what would have been the, the family land and, and possessions of Saul and Jonathan. And so no longer will Mephibosheth need to be cared for by the means of another individual. But he now has his own possessions. It's unsparing. And not only that, David brings him in, treats him like one of his very own, says, you're going to eat at my table. I'm going to protect you. I'm bringing you in. And the idea of adoption, the doctrine of adoption just is, is coming off the pages here, just like in Ephesians chapter 1, that beautiful long sentence in the first chapter of Ephesians, in love he predestined us for adoption as sons. That is lavishing grace. And we get to see a picture of that here in 2 Samuel chapter 9. The king's grace is unsparing. It spares no expense. He gave his very own son to die for us while we were still his enemies. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. The king's grace also is undeserved. There is nothing here that Mephibosheth has to offer David. He simply is relying upon someone to care for him. You know, sadly, there was a that tragic moment when King Saul, Jonathan are killed. And we learn in 2 Samuel 4, after hearing of this, Mephibosheth's nurse takes him up and is trying to get him out to protect him from the Philistines. Yet in doing so, she falls and it crushes Mephibosheth's feet and he becomes crippled. We are worse off than being crippled. We're not just spiritually crippled or disabled. We are spiritually dead. The Bible says that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. Yet God has made us alive in Christ Jesus. We don't just need somebody to give us a jump start, a little seed money to start a business. Like, okay, Lord, get us started, and then we'll make our way to you. We are dead. We need more than just a life preserver thrown out at us. We need God to resuscitate us, to give us life, to take hardened hearts and make them flesh, to cry out the dead bones and make them alive. And that's what God's do God does for us. For by grace you are saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. It's the grace of God. God's grace, it's unexpected, it's unsparing, it's undeserved, and it's unending. Verse 13 of 2 Samuel 9 says, So Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he ate always at the king's table. For those of us in Christ who have been adopted, lavished on with the grace of God and his love, when the king returns, we will live with him forever in the new heavens and the new earth, dining, fellowshipping, community with our eternal God, who is king forever. Be blessed today. Experience this grace. Thank you.